To understand polarity, we'll first look at individual chemical bonds and then the entire molecule. Let's look at polarity between two atoms first. Each atom has a specific value for its electronegativity. To figure out if a bond is polar or nonpolar, we look at the difference between these values. Let's look at a condensed periodic table with the values we'll use most frequently. Let's try HCl, hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen has a value of 2.20 and chlorine has a value of 3.16. The difference between these, 2.20 minus 3.16, gives us 0.96. That's the difference in electronegativity for H and Cl. But what does that number mean? Chemical bonds can be classified along a continuum. If the difference in electronegativity is above 2.0, it's an ionic bond. We consider molecules between 2.0 and 0.5 to be polar, and below 0.5 is nonpolar. These are just guides you may be given slightly different values. Back to HCl, we found the difference in electronegativity to be 0.96, meaning that HCl is considered a polar molecule. Other examples of polar molecules, HF, HBr, NHI. We've been talking about electronegativity. Electronegativity, often written as EN, is the ability of atoms to attract shared electrons. Those are the electrons that are between atoms when we draw Lewis structures. As we've seen in the periodic table, atoms have different values for electronegativity. The trend is that atoms are more electronegative as you move towards fluorine. For group 18, the noble gases, they rarely form chemical bonds, and we don't really consider their electronegativity to be important. So we know HCl is a polar molecule with its difference in electronegativity greater than 0.5, but less than 2.0. For something like N2, nitrogen gas, we can look up the value for N, which is 3.04. So 3.04 minus 3.04 is 0. Back to our continuum, we see that a difference below 0.5 is nonpolar covalent. At this point, you probably realize you need to memorize the numbers in our continuum. When we have diatomic molecules like O2, N2, F2, these will always be nonpolar because the difference when we subtract the electronegativity values will be zero. Pause and take a moment to figure out if each one of these molecules is polar or nonpolar. For HF, we have a difference of 1.78, meaning this is going to be a very polar molecule with those shared electrons spending most of their time around the fluorine atom. For BrCl, the difference is 0 0.20. We can have different atoms and still have a nonpolar bond. For I2, they're the same. We'll have an electronegativity value of 0. That means I2 is nonpolar. We can now find the bond polarity between two atoms and even do simple atoms like HCl or N2. Next up, we want to look at polarity in larger molecules. It's useful to follow these steps. First have the Lewis structure. Second, we'll look at the individual bonds, just like we've been doing in this video. And finally, we'll look at the shape and the symmetry to figure out if the molecule is polar or nonpolar overall. We'll start with CCL4, carbon tetrachloride. Carbon has a value of 2.55 and Cl has a value of 3.16. The difference between these two numbers is 0.61. So we know that each bond is going to be polar. We can write the structure like this. The arrows point towards the more electronegative atom. The delta symbol, that shows the charge. Here, Cl has a negative charge because it's more electronegative. At this point, we've looked at the Lewis structure and we've calculated the electronegativity difference between the bonds. Each carbon-chlorine bond is polar. But be careful. This alone won't tell us if the whole molecule is polar or nonpolar. We need to consider the symmetry of the molecule to answer that question. CCL4 is a symmetrical molecule. So watch what happens. We have a carbon here in the center and we're going to add chlorines. So we add one chlorine and then we add the second one and they spread out. They push away from each other. The reason they do that is this atom here, the surface, are all the electrons and electrons are negative. So when I try to put two negatives together, they'll spread out. If I add another one, they spread out again. And you can see that they're equidistant. 
And finally, I'll add the fourth Cl, so we have CCl4, and they're spread out in this tetrahedral structure. This is symmetrical. Any angle you look at it, it's pretty much the same. That means that the surface of the molecule will be the same everywhere. There'll be no poles, and it won't be polar. Tetrahedral shaped molecules will be nonpolar if they consist of carbon and four of the same type of atoms attached to that carbon. Using the steps we've just covered, pause and try to figure out if CH3Cl is polar or nonpolar. For CH3Cl, we have the Lewis structure here, and we can calculate the EN difference for each of the bonds. You can see that CCl, that's a polar bond, while the CH bond is nonpolar. So with our Lewis structure, we can take a look at the actual shape of the entire molecule. We see we have the carbon with four atoms attached, and we know those are going to spread out and form a tetrahedral structure. We can see that we have two sides to this molecule. We have a side with the chlorine atom, which is more electronegative, and that means those shared electrons between the chlorine and the carbon will spend more time around the chlorine atom, making it more negative. That means we have a negative pole and a positive pole and a polar molecule. Up until now, we've only talked about electrons that are between atoms. They're bonded electron pairs. We also have pairs of electrons that are called unbonded electron pairs, or lone pairs. They are not in between atoms, but they do have their own orbitals, and that means they influence the shape, the polarity, and the symmetry of a molecule. NH3 is an excellent example. First, we'll draw the Lewis structure for NH3. Next, we can calculate the differences in electronegativity between bonds, and we see that the NH bond is indeed polar. But let's go back and look at the shape of the molecule to see if it's symmetrical. We have our nitrogen atom in the middle, and let's add three hydrogen atoms. As we add them, they spread out to be as far away from each other as possible, and we have this structure. When you look at it, it looks like it should be nonpolar. Each of the hydrogens is pulling in an opposite direction, and they should cancel out. But we need to go back to our Lewis structure, because we have a lone pair of electrons we have to consider. When we add the lone pair, it influences the shape. It actually pushes down the hydrogens, and now we have a pyramidal, also called pyramidal, structure. So the structure is no longer symmetrical, and that means we're going to have a positive and a negative side, and we're going to have a polar molecule. It's important to stress that polarity results from an unequal sharing of electrons, the ones that are bonded, shared between atoms but it also results from the shape or the symmetry of the molecule. And this can be influenced by unbonded electrons, like we saw with NH3. Let's take a look at one more. Pause and determine if H2O is a polar or nonpolar molecule. We'll first look at the Lewis structure for H2O, and then we'll calculate the difference between bonds. We can see that that HO bond, that's a polar bond. Next, let's look at the shape of the H2O molecule to see if we have symmetry. So we'll start with our oxygen atom, and we'll put two hydrogen atoms on that. They spread out to be as far away as possible from each other, and it looks like it would be symmetrical, like these two hydrogens would cancel out. However, we have our lone pairs, two of them. We'll put one, two, and now we can see that the molecule is no longer symmetrical. We have a distinct top and bottom. Because we have this distinct top and bottom to the molecule, water is a polar molecule. Polarity is a hugely important topic in science. Everything from medicines to building materials, how the molecules interact, is largely a function of their polarity. To figure that out, we drew the Lewis structures. Then we looked at the individual bonds, the electronegativity difference between those bonds. Finally, we looked at the shape and the symmetry, including those lone pair electrons, to figure out if the molecule was polar or nonpolar. This is Dr. B with Polar and Nonpolar Molecules, and thanks for watching.